Dialogs provide a standardized Windows experience for users of your application. Let's take Visual C Sharp 2005 Express Edition for example. Let's go to the File menu and select Open Project. Here we see the Open File dialog. Let's go to the Save As menu option and we'll see the Save File dialog. We can also view the Page Setup dialog and also the Print dialog. So one of the usability features of Windows applications is that each application shares some familiar aspects, menus, toolbars, and of course the dialogues. This allows someone with no experience with your application to be productive quickly because they'll have some familiarity with an open dialog, a save dialog, a print dialog, and so on. To demonstrate the use of dialogs within an application, we've created a little project called Dialog Control CS. And this example features a rich text box control that allows us to demonstrate most of the dialog boxes to create a mini Microsoft Word application. We're going to allow the user to open an RTF, or rather a rich text format document, save it, to preview it before print, and then print it to select uh, the text font for a selected area and a text color and even more. So when using dialogs, most dialogs are going to require basically four steps. First of all, some minor configuration, uh, which is what most of the code in this example will be doing. Secondly, uh, you'll use the show method to display the dialog to your user. Then, third step is that you'll evaluate the dialog result to determine if the user wants to actually employ the settings that they made within the dialog box. And then fourthly, to apply the settings made by the user in the dialog box, or rather to take some action as a result of them clicking the Apply or the OK buttons. Using this basic formula, you don't necessarily have to memorize the properties and the methods of each dialog control. So this lesson won't be an exhaustive look at all the properties and methods of each of the dialog controls. However, you should get a good idea of what's available and the basics of configuring it and where it fits into your application's needs. So let's start with a brief demonstration of the application. First of all, we'll select the Open. And you'll notice in the My Documents directory, I've copied a few RTF files. For example, a end user uh, agreement. We'll click Open to that. And you can see that within the white area, our rich text box control, uh, there is a number of, of uh, uh, some text with some formatting applied to it. Uh, we can make some changes to the text by selecting it and then clicking the font menu item from the edit menu and you'll see we have a font dialog box. We can change the font to something that's installed on our system and you can see the change made to the rich text box. We can also change the color of the text, the selected text, and this will display a color dialog. And now you can see that we have it in red and in very bold text. Once we've made some changes, we can select the Save menu item to give it a new name. Let's change the name to EULA4.RTF. And here we have a Save File dialog. And then we can choose to set up the page with the familiar Page Setup dialog. And then finally, we can print which will launch our print dialog. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop the application. We didn't use all of the dialogs that are available. If you scroll down, uh, there are a number of different um, dialog controls available to you within your toolbox. Some of them in the printing section and then the rest of them in the dialog section of your toolbox. And we used most of these for this example. Each time I determined I wanted to use one of the dialog controls, I simply dragged and dropped it onto my designer surface, which added a reference to it within my designer tray. I can set properties, and for the most part, I can get away with just setting many of the properties right within my properties window at design time. I also have programmatic control at runtime by writing code. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code that was written for our application. We'll start with our uh, open menu item click event 
And so you can see that we're initializing the open file dialog by changing the title property, the filter property, which we'll come back to in just a moment, the default file name that will display whenever uh, the dialog is first displayed. So in this case, we don't want any default file name to be displayed there and the filter index and we'll come back to that in just a moment. The next step that we'll want to take after initializing some of the properties including the initial directory which we set to my documents uh, is to display the dialog through the use of the show dialog method for our dialog and then determine if the user clicked the OK button using the dialog result enumeration. If it is OK then we'll perform the steps that were or rather the selections that were made by the user within the dialog. Now this is an important distinction. The dialog controls themselves will not perform any of the actions that our application would wish to take with that. It merely displays a form and then reports back the fact that the user clicked the OK or the cancel button or whatever have you. So the uh, programmer has to decide what action is taken uh, once the user clicks the OK button. Now we can still access values from that control as you can see here once the user clicks the OK button what we're doing is calling the load file method of our rich text box and we're going to use the file name property from our uh, file dialog which at this point is now closing uh, and we can also save off that file name into a private uh, variable that we have at our form level. But the work itself has to be performed by the programmer. The dialog control is merely for display purposes only. All work associated with actually opening the file has to be left to the programmer, in this case through the use of our load file method of our rich text box. Now let's take a look, for example, at uh, one of the properties, or two of the properties specifically, this filter property. It's a series of name value pairs which are all separated by the pipe character. This should be rich text files, which is displayed within the drop down list box of the file types. And then behind the scenes, we'll use the star.rtf. The control will use that in order to filter out and display only .rtf files. If the user selects all files, then we'll use the, uh, the DOS uh, wildcard. Uh, characters to denote that we want to view all the files. Let's see how this works within our application. So what we're talking about here is the file types. So you can see rich text files is displayed behind the scenes. This combo box knows now to filter by .rtf. We can also select all files to view all of the files within our uh, My Documents directory. The use of the filter index will select which of these items will actually display. It's zero based, so in this case, we will by default select the rich text files option. We could change this to one to select all files by default. This is similar to our save menu item click event. Here we've set the default extension equal to RTF, so if someone just types in the name EULA4 and they do not include the .rtf extension, it will automatically add that to the end of the file name. We set the overwrite prompt equal to true to make sure that if that file name already exists on the hard drive, then uh, it will prompt the user asking them if they want to overwrite that. We also get to set the title, what actually is displayed at the top of the dialog. The same then uh, that applied to the open dialog applies here where we're showing the dialog retrieving the result what the user clicked on either OK apply or cancel if they click OK then we want to take some action again our dialog box does not know how to save the file that is delegated to uh, the coder and in this particular case it delegates that to the rich text box save file method wherein we use the file name that was retrieved from our file dialog, our save file dialog, and then we also tell it that we want to save the type of file as rich text and save again into a private member variable the property name file name from our save file dialog. And so that basic formula applies whether we select uh, the page setup, the print, or for example the font menu item. Again, we're showing the dialog 
if the user clicks the OK button, then we will take whatever font was selected by the font dialog and set that to the selection font property of our rich text box. Same is true with our color menu. So hopefully you're getting a sense now of the steps that we first configure the dialog, whether in the properties window or by code. We show the dialog, we retrieve back the result, then we take action based on that, those selections by the user. And just to recap, by using that basic formula, we can use just about any dialog box to make the user's experience with our application consistent with their experience with other Windows applications.